What is up guys, welcome back to another Destiny 2 build session. Today we're going to be covering a setup designed around AoE explosions and utilising the ability to produce Warmind cells at our will via Warmind Decree and show you the power of Energy Accelerant mod and why this simple mod can make the Code Commander setup one of the most deadliest but effective subclasses to use for the season alone. I have heard a lot about the new Energy Accelerant mod and what it can offer and the fact that this mod can not only make your weapon with Firefly, Chain Reaction or Dragonfly even more powerful than before, but it can also affect the general blast radius for other weapons in game, even to the point of making the Crown Splitter Sword Heavy Attack a one-shot against champions, but that will be for another day. Now one combo that did catch my eye is the Energy Accelerant mod with Runa's Effigy, and what this mod does is double the amount of damage your Heavy Attack does. Why or how this is a thing, nobody knows, but to give you an idea as to how powerful the combo is, one heavy attack against a barrier, overload or unstoppable, who are all stunned, can be one-shotted by it. Unstunned can leave them with a quarter to a silver of health, but the general AoE of our transmuted orbs are now powerful enough to do some serious damage onto them without the use of heavy weapons or supers involved. So this is where today's video is going to be looking into and building around to make it the most effective weapon to use in this season's array of mods, while also enhancing the Void Explosion with our subclass of choice. We are also going to be dabbling in the art of Warmind Cells and Elemental Worlds as well, and lastly show you how you can improve on the style by switching out mods and while keeping to the design of the build still. Quite a lengthy one, but like always I'll cover as much information that you'll need to know with the following build. Before we head in, if you enjoyed the video then please do leave a like and a sub as it really does help me out. Now starting off the subclass, we will be using Code the Commander to access his Void Detonations ability which will pair well with our secondary and effects on our mods. Code the Commander has always been a great ad clearance subclass for the Titan because of the Void Detonations that can offer a huge amount of ability to energy back from kills, but also from the single use of Banner Shield for all contents in mind. When thinking about the creation of the build, I wanted to create a setup that allowed me to activate my Warmind Decree mod in more than one way, and the combo I created allowed double AoE damage all around me, but also multiple ways of producing cells via abilities or weapon perks alone. Out of the three subclasses, Code Commander offered me the best option in terms of getting every bit of effects available to produce both ability and detonations on a large scale for Warmind cells. What makes the subclass quite good is how you'll always be rewarded with health, melee and grenade energy just from simply detonating your void charges thanks to the resupply perk in hand with the controlled demolition perk as well. When you start to add in certain mods like Ashes to Assets or the general elemental world mods, you can then start to get a lot more grenade usage over time, which then leads back into your abilities and etc. It's basically an infinite loop of ability energy freely available for you to access as long as you tag just one enemy with it. Further support from the Heart of Inmost Light Exotic will guarantee that you get the needed energy there and then as well. With this in mind, you now have 3 to 4 ways of creating warmer cells from subclass abilities or super, effigy, and a weapon with void firefly attached in your heavy slot if you choose to use it. The build is a polar opposite to Ko the Seedbreaker, who in retrospective is also a great ad clearing build that with the right mods can also bring a huge amount of chaos on the field. The only difference here is that that one is solar and our one is void. For weapons our main priority is Effigy which will be doing all the work throughout. From here I decided to accommodate the setup by adding in weapons that fit the theme of explosions in one way or another. A prime example of this is using the ignition code with blinding grenade, ambitious assassin and danger zone which will all help with stopping enemies movements and allow my secondary to net easy kills. Although the weapon lacks the ability to be used as a void weapon so it can also gain the effects of the mod being used, it still offers quite a lot of usage outside of what my secondary can do. For example, with blinding grenades and danger zone I can blind enemies within a 5-7 to seven meter radius and upon successfully getting a kill. I can then gain 2 in a tube rather than 1, which will allow me to spread this effects even more wider. We then also have the fact that grenade launchers can make great DPS weapons against bosses, which Effigy can fail at if it's not turning his enemies into orbs. This here should allow some form of balance between our primary and secondary who can work together and cover the many weaknesses each setup have. 
of course, the role I have isn't for everyone, and some of you may want a version that actually has explosion radius to it. For this, having proximity grenades, or spike grenades, will make the grenade launcher feel a lot more damaging against the higher tier enemies, if you wish. For a secondary, I'm using the Enruinous Effigy for its heavy attack effects when combined with the Energy Accelerant mod. Many of you here will already know where this is heading, but for those that don't, Runa's Effigy when combined with the Energy Accelerant mod will increase our heavy attack output by times 2 against all enemies within the area, and can promptly one-shot most Ultra to Major tier enemies who have required a super beforehand. Now, with this fact, we also have the Warmind Decree mod released that allows users to create Warmind cells via Void Splash damage, the same as Wrath of Rasputin mod. Putting two and two together can allow you to create Warmind cells on the go and also do a large amount of damage in one go as well. This also has a secondary effect as well, of allowing your build to have a purpose in different roles, depending on what content you choose to use it for. Producing cells for damage alone are great, but we can also extend this feature to provide debuffs, buffs, or general support that most mods can offer. For heavy, I've chosen you the combination heavy machine gun with Zen movement and dragonfly, and like I mentioned earlier, this weapon here can produce warmind cells thanks to the energy accelerant mod and its interaction with dragonfly. Now, for us to pull this off, we will need to make sure enemies are near each other as close as possible, so the explosion's reaction triggers warmind decree and produce the goods. We can enhance this by adding in the Dragonfly spec to increase damage and explosions further, but I would only recommend this if you plan on using a heavy a lot more often than, say, your secondary for example. Although a heavy should be used as a backup weapon against ultra or major enemies, the amount of ammo available should allow you to have a bit of fun in terms of creating cells on the fly. For the stats, I've decided to heavily invest into our discipline area for the amount of times I plan to use my grenades throughout a game mode. I do remember as the build relies on my secondary to do most work, my subclass will also be filling in the void in terms of netting a large number of kills to routinely keep my mods and abilities afloat. Though we are using the Heart of Inmost Light to sustain the area fairly well, I plan on using everything in my arsenal to make most out of what has been offered, and I will need at least one ability freely available at all times that I can rely on to produce enough energy to go around. Now, at 80, we do get a fairly fast cooldown of 41 seconds alone, which when combined with the Elemental World mods, Impact Induction, Bomber, and Resupply Perk, is generally enough to keep you going from start to finish. We can, however, reduce this down and let other stat areas, such as Intellect or Strength, receive further assistance as required. This, however, will all depend on what you'll be using the most compared to what I'm using. If you feel that using grenades is a must for the build, then stick with what you've got. If not, then further invest into your strength so that you avoid detonators via melee feel more worthwhile. Or if you plan on using your super as much as possible, then invest in intellect all the way. From this, you can then slowly build around these areas by attaching key mods that can further enhance the build, such as adding in the Front of Wisdom mod for overtime intellect regeneration, or Well of Tenacity for reducing incoming damage, which will allow you to melee much more safer. That's a prime example as to how you can build around these stats if you feel what I have done is too much in design. It's a great way of planning out your build if you're not sure what to aim for, and such. Now, as we've covered the main topics of setup we are using, here are the mods we have and how they will overall affect the build. For head, we have Discipline, Ashes to Assets, Dynamo, and Reaping Well Maker mod. Arm, we have Mine Recovery, Impact Induction, and Global Reach mod. Chest, we have Discipline, Concussive Dampener x2, and Elemental Orders mod. Leg, we have Minor Intellect, Absolution, Grenade Launcher Scavenger, and Elemental Armors mod. Mark, we have Discipline, NG Accelerant, Bomber, and Warmind Decree mod. Now, like I mentioned with the stats section of the build, the mod setup can be customized to balance out what key ability gets used the most and how this will affect your weapons in the process as well. Since Bruno's FG is going to be the main key piece of gear that will control the outcome of the setup, some of the mods used can be also switched for a specific and direct role if you wish. For example, my setup will utilize the void abilities to produce elemental wells that once dropped will provide a boost of energy to whatever abilities left over and needs to be filled, while my exotic chest will also act as an accordance. On top of that, producing AoE void kills will net me warmind cells that can spread this damage far and wide via the global reach mod. The idea of the build is to produce constant AoE blasts wherever we go and prevent enemies from ever surrounding us, which I believe we have achieved. 
However, this can be adjusted to play a debuffer and buffer role instead, where instead of having one set of mods, we can use multiple, such as Cellular Suppression, Warm Mind Protection, and Reaping Wellmaker mod. This setup can allow you to produce numerous cells that will debuff enemies, and also buff yourself and team who have the right gear to match. Or perhaps you'll want one that focuses on pure defense instead, to which all we need to do is switch in Well Tenacity, Protective Light, Light from Darkness, and Warm Mind Protection mod. Now, every time you produce a well, or a cell, you'll become a walking tank. What I'm trying to show you is that with this build in hand, you can create and customize the build with whatever mods you have in mind, and they will all work in hand with no issues. As of lately, I've been experimenting more and more with combining all my cells, elemental wells, and charged with light to create a setup that allows you to think outside of the box in terms of crafting. Of course, going for a simple setup like mine will always reward you with a huge boost of accomplishment from the end results. But at the same time, you can also build in a style that suits whatever content you have in mind. That's what my design philosophy is with this build and the dozens of I do. Think small and then think big. The build with its customization style also fits in well with the design of Runes when you think about it, as turning an enemy into all can allow you to use simple features that can bend back into the mods you have, such as shielding to protect and inflict damage, or using the heavy for a big final AOE blast against all. A Warmind Effigy is a build that can be used for one purpose or many, depending on how you want to build around it. Although the build is focused on maximizing our AoE Void Blast attacks and to CC enemies into oblivion, this doesn't have to always be the case with users who want other options as well. The build for example could fit in well with Nightfalls with the many changing environments and challenges provided to the user, for which the build can cater to the user's desire. If this sounds like a build worth investing for, just for this season, then I would recommend you give it a try until the end. It's definitely fun to play with and also allows freedom of customization for those who want to stick with one build, but also build around it in multiple ways. So if you enjoyed the video, then please leave a like and a sub, and also follow me on Twitter to keep up to date with Destiny content if you do that type of stuff. Link is down below. But once again, thanks for stopping by, and I'll see you on the next one.